Hi, I'm Don Chapman with Scales Industrial Technologies. I'm here today to review preventive maintenance procedures required on a rotary screw air compressor. Always before doing any preventative maintenance, make sure you secure all power sources, electric and air. We always like to break this fitting loose or on the other end to make sure there's no air trapped in the discharge line after we secured the valve over at the air tank. We crack it loose. There's no air in there, so I can actually put this back on and secure the fitting. I'm now going to reach in and relieve the pressure that's in the sump by rotating counterclockwise. The sump safety that's in here, I hear no air rushing out, so I now know my reservoir has no pressure in it. The next thing I'm going to do is remove the four bolts, take the sump cover off. Inside of there, there are two elements that look like these. I'll be removing them. There's an O-ring in here. The two, they come with grease, lubricate the O-rings, put your two new se uh, separators in, replace the O-ring that's in the cover, put some grease on it, make sure you set the cover back on correctly, and tighten it back down. Here is our oil sample port located in here. You do have to take this while the machine's running. It is a Schrader type valve. If we were changing the oil before we locked out this unit, I would have took a sample first because we want to get a sample of the old oil that was in the machine before we changed it. If we're not changing the oil, we can take this sample before or after when the unit's online. You would take, take the cap off your bottle. There's a screw on cover over this nipple here. This is a push lock type of, uh, of Schrader valve. You can hold your bottle there. You push in on this while it's running. The bottle will fill when it, before it gets to the top, release it. Let it finish dripping off. Cap your bottle off. Put your cap back on the fitting. And then later on, when you're doing your paperwork, fill out your oil sample report, all your information, model, serial number, type of oil, your information, and send it off to the appropriate lab for analysis so you can tell you how your oil is in the unit, if you're picking up any metals or any minerals that are in the air that's going in. But uh, they'll give you a report, and if it's bad, they'll tell you to change the oil. So this way here, you can prep, change the oil, and protect the life of your air compressor. We also have an inline scavenge check valve here. It's a spring-loaded orifice uh, fitting that lets the oil from the uh, separators return to the air end while it's running through an orifice and a screen. We do like to remove this, take it apart and clean the screen that's in there and make sure the orifice is open whenever we do a PM, reassemble it, put it back in. And when we start the unit, we always look to make sure we have a vapor of oil going through the line to make sure it's operating correctly. The oil drain valve is located here. It's a half inch ball valve. There's a half inch MPT pipe plug in the end of it. We like to make up a hose with a half inch MPT fitting. We remove the plug. There's a hole right here in the header. We'll screw it into the pipe. We'll have our drain pan located down here. We'll open it up, we'll drain all the oil out of it. And we'll also open up the sump where you would fill the oil back in to help it vent to get all the oil out of the machine. When you're all done draining the oil, close your ball valve, remove your line, put your pipe plug back in, all the oil is now out of the unit and you're ready to fill the unit. Here's where our oil filter is located on this unit. It's mounted vertically upside down. Counterclockwise, remove the element. Clean up all your oil mess and oil mating surfaces. Take your new element. Always lubricate the sealing surface with some fresh oil. Screw it back down. When you feel a touch, about another three quarters of a turn and it's tight. Either one of these caps you can take off for putting the oil back in. There's a indicator bar in here, red on the top, white in the middle, red on the bottom. Obviously, red on the top is if the oil level is too high. White's where your oil level is good, red is too low. So when you take your cap off, put your funnel in, start adding your oil in, you'll watch the level come up to the indicator. When the oil gets to the top of the white where it's just meeting the red, you're full of oil, that's it. Take it out, put your plugs back in, you're all set. While down here, we also like to take a peek at the coupling insert. There's two screws on the top, we'll remove them. We'll take this guard off, take a peek in there, rotate it over, take a look at that coupling, make sure everything looks copacetic. After putting the guard back on here, we'll move over to greasing the motor. There's two fittings, one located up on top for the drive end bearing, and one on the non-drive bearing. Uh, make sure you use a recommended factory grease. This uses clubber grease. A couple of pumps in each one at the recommended intervals. Nice and easy, that's all there is to that there. The air filter is located inside this panel. We'll take it off. Very easy to remove. 
pulls right off, inspect it, make sure it's clean. If it's clean enough where you don't think you need to replace it, blow it off from the inside out, blow the dirt back out of it. If it's dirty enough, take and change it. Easy enough to put back on, install your cover. Inside of this panel is one of our cabinet elements and our air and oil coolers. I've already removed the screws, removed the panel. Up here is our air and oil coolers. Get compressed air, hopefully from another source. Get in here and blow all your dust and debris out of the cooler. Make sure it looks good and clean, otherwise it's gonna affect how hot your machine runs and it also can affect the life of your oil. Over here is one of those cabinet filters we were talking about. It pops out. There's an element in here, if it's not too dirty, you could blow it out, if not, change it. There is also one located on the other side in a little different location, but there are two. Put your new filter back in, and you're all set, and you can put your cover back on. The Air Smart controller in this compressor holds six maintenance hour meters in here that will count down from their preset uh, total amount down to zero. When they run out, they go down to zero. They'll display what kind of service is needed. You have to reset these after you do any of the uh, service that we went through already. So you would go in, reset them. Once you reset them, it's good to go and it's starting to count all over again. Nice, uh, nice design, nice heads up. Really takes care, keeps the customer informed, keeps everybody informed. If I can be any further service to you, please call any of our Scales Industrial Technologies offices. Our numbers are on the website and I hope you enjoyed this video.